I want to do just a tiny bit of a throwback, a, a really recent throwback to Matt's presentation at the member summit about how the community builds a shared story. That's how we talked about it at the member summit. What, what this really means is how the work gets done here at the consortium. So we have lots of ideas to explore. We have the best group of people in the form of the members um, who iterate on these ideas. And those iterations come from their operational experience, right? So people willing to go out and try some things and come back and report back on how they went is really how the work gets done here. Sometimes when we collect lots of little ideas, Sometimes we lose them or they get kind of put on the shelf, um, either because they don't quite stick or the time's not right. And so predictive customer engagement's been, that conversation's been around uh, and happening for 10 years now. And now I think there are a couple of things converging that make that conversation newly relevant and maybe relevant in a deeper way in terms of the technology and the experience and kind of the, the need coming together all at, the, all at the same time. We're coming back now to an idea that's been around for a little while and, and let's poke at it and make sure that it's still relevant and useful. So I want to go back just for a minute to this piece of that predictive customer engagement loop or double loop model. In the event loop, there's the box that has analysis and rules in it. And at the time, this was very helpful for me personally to sort of think about the, the pieces that were necessary to do this kind of work, right? So there was the idea that these four things are separate, right? We have a place to store our data. We have things that we can do with that data. And that's where our machine learning techniques and technologies come in, right? There are things that we learn from that data because we have run those machine learning techniques. And then there are ways in which we're visualizing what we've learned and thinking about who we might visualize that for and how those visualizations might be different for different folks. This I find to be really helpful in terms of thinking about how we're going to approach an AI implementation or, or perhaps even the way to build a use case, because we have to think about each one of these layers in terms of what that's going to look like and do we have investment in it? What is the structure of each of these layers? So this for me is a, it continues to be a really helpful kind of way to visualize um, the things that we need to have in place in order to actually get benefit from an adventure of this kind. So we're talking about this in a room at PTC in August of 2018. At this team meeting, we had um, open space and our friend Bonnie uh, convened this topic, which was how to get started with AI in our companies. The two sentence summary is start small, be clear about the use cases, be prepared to learn and take incremental measures. That feels right to me. That seems like the right way to approach such a thing. In conclusion here, I went ahead and took our list about what we were excited about and dropped it into our friend ChatGPT just to see. It turns out we as a group are excited about AI's potential to enhance knowledge management and enhance customer engagement. What I would love to leave you with is perhaps what might be something that you're going to try in the next three to six months that you might like to come back and talk to us about. I need, do need to tell you that the consortium has an MLAI official mascot, and it is the pumpkin toadlet. I say it's the mascot because it's so derpy. Christina decided it's her metaphor for AI because it, it leaps enthusiastically without knowing how to land. Sounds right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I have owed Christina this t-shirt for some time, <laughs> and now, now it exists on the Zazzle store. Please enjoy. You too can buy your own What's Your Use Case t-shirt with the pumpkin toad lip.